Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the College Football 25 updates and how I had some issues with some of the different rankings and ratings they put out there, but overall it means we're closer to the game and I got no problem with that. But let's get into our last segment here and let's talk about my guys going into 2024. This is kind of a fun segment where I just break down five guys every Friday that I think are just going to have really, really good 2024s and I'm very excited to go see play. And then at the end of the year, if I'm wrong about these guys, you can come back and throw it in my face, which is always fun for the both of us. But uh, let's get into this and let's start with Daquan Finn. This is one of my favorite players in the entire country. Uh, I know he's wearing a Toledo jersey there. He is now a Baylor Bear, a very, very good pickup for Dave Aranda and the Baylor Bears there. He's going to start at quarterback and the reason is Baylor doesn't have a lot of offense to speak of. Um, they have some guys out there. Hal Presley's a very talented wide receiver I like. I think they're going to have a good run game, but the reality is this guy's going to have to shoulder a lot of the load on this offense, and he's going to be more than capable to do that because he did it at Toledo in a lot of different ways. Whether it's running the ball, throwing the ball, this kid can be an offense by himself, and I think he's one of those really, really special players where when you look at Baylor, it's not necessarily the team in the Big 12 that jumps out to you by any means. It's not necessarily the team that has the best roster, the team that has the best um, ability on the outside or anything really across the league, but they do have a kid that can change games. They do have a kid that can win games that you don't expect to win. And frankly, I would be shocked if they didn't have one of those games this year where you look up and Baylor's beaten someone like Utah or Kansas State or Kansas and you're wondering how. And then you look at Daquan Finn's stat line and it says, 200 yards rushing and 150 through the air and three touchdowns and just ridiculous stuff. And you'll have an idea of just how special this kid is. So absolutely love him. Loved him at Toledo. I think when he gets to Baylor, it's just more of a spotlight on him. And he has an ability to show the entire world what he's about. Not just, you know, the guys that the crazy people like me that are always locked into group of five football. Um, but let's move right along. And let's talk about Jalen Lane. Uh, this is a wide receiver down at Virginia Tech. And He's going to be someone that we're definitely talking about at the end of the year. I can almost promise you that. I think he's someone that absolutely will make noise in the NFL draft, frankly, because he's uh, you know a little bit smaller stature. I believe 5'9", something like 185, something like that, but the speed is off the charts, and it's, it's one of those guys where it's a get the ball in his hands and let him work type of guy, and uh, that is a huge thing for Kyron Drones because the connection between these two is absolutely incredible at this point. They're both coming back for their second season and uh, at in Blacksburg, and they're both just so comfortable with each other. I think this offense is going to revolve, at least in the passing game, largely around Jalen Lane because he opens so many doors for so many other guys, whether he's going in motion and kind of taking a safety away from one side of the field or he's just running a go and, and uh, uncovering kind of the underneath for the tight end, whatever that looks like. He's going to be a guy that they don't only utilize when the ball is in his hands. Uh, they're going to utilize him in so many different ways in that offense and cannot wait to see how they go about this. So I'm very high on uh, Virginia Tech, and Jalen Lane is a huge reason for that. I think this offense is going to be just absolutely disgusting, and I think a lot of the targets going in the direction of this kid is going to be a big reason for that. So Virginia Tech has every intention on winning the ACC. That's what they want to do this upcoming year, and if they're going to do it, guys like Kyron Jones has to have a big year. Jalen Lane has to be the wide receiver that he's capable of being and maybe come out being a second or third round pick in the draft because there's tons of things that Virginia Tech can do that can not only change the trajectory of that program, but the trajectory of a lot of these young guys' careers and Jalen Lane might be at the very top of that list. So it'll be fascinating to watch him develop. Very, very excited to see what he can bring to the Hokies this year. But let's talk about Luke Reynolds here for a second. And this one's a little bit uh, interesting because when you look at Penn State, the wide receiver talent is not where they want it to be. Let's be totally honest. And frankly, this isn't even going to be your starting tight end. Tyler Warren will absolutely be the starter at tight end for Penn State. But the reality is, I don't necessarily know if they're going to have multiple or three wide receivers to throw out there at any given time and feel really confident about. So I expect a lot of 12 personnel. I expect a lot of two tight end sets with one running back and use that kind of as their base offense. And I think that's going to be a really good way to go about business because a guy like Tyler Warren does everything right. You know, he's a great blocker. He can run all the routes you need him to run. He has really sure hands, can do a lot of really good things. But 
pass catching isn't necessarily his thing. It's not necessarily his calling card. It is for Luke Reynolds. And although he's a freshman just coming into this team, there are certain guys that you just can't keep off the field. And sometimes they're at just positions of need, and that's the reason. Sometimes it's because of their just ridiculous ability. This guy's kind of both. Um, I think he has insane ability to catch the ball over the middle of the field. I think he's really, really strong at the point of attack. I think he has every ability to be a huge asset for them in the pass game. But he is a freshman, and it might take him a little bit of time to get into that. But I do think that when you look at Penn State's pass game, it's really not going to be won by the wide receivers. I like Julian Fleming. I think Harrison Wallace uh, III is going to make some plays this year. I think Caden Saunders is going to take a step forward. But those tight ends are going to be as big of a part of an offense as really any in the entire country. So very much like Luke Reynolds, I think, even though he's a freshman, I expect him to be a big part of this offense, especially down the stretch of the season for sure. And then let's move right along, and let's talk about Braden Swin- uh, Swinson, a very talented edge rusher from LSU. If you rewatch the LSU games from a year ago, there's not many positives to take away from that defensive side of the ball. It was downright bad last year, and every LSU player, coach, fan would tell you that. I promise you that. But I don't necessarily love this defensive line overall. I do think they do have guys that can occupy, that can, you know, eat space up, whether it's uh, JVR uh, Suggs, who came in from Grand Valley State, or it's some of the recruits that they brought in, whoever it is. They're going to need people that can just eat up space and give their edge rushers those one-on-one battles that they're going to need because this is a guy that can win those one-on-one battles very, very comfortably. Um, And he can win them very consistently, which is absolutely huge for this team. He had two sacks a year ago, uh, 33 total tackles, so didn't necessarily light the world on fire by any means, but made a number of really, really good plays and has that ability to kind of be that premier pass rusher this year for LSU and if you know anything about Kevin Peoples the edge or the outside linebacker edge rushing coach and uh, Blake Baker they do a fantastic job of putting together different pass rushes and exotic blitzes and making it really tough for you to just double someone that you need to double so I think he's going to have plenty of chances to get to the quarterback especially if Harold Perkins is a part of this pass rush it's going to be really tough to double this kid and if you can't double him he might just be able to get to the quarterback a very, very, a, a lot. Let's just put it that way. Um, and then finally, I want to talk about Dejon Terry, a very, very talented defensive tackle from Oklahoma. And I think when we talk about Oklahoma, everyone looks at the defensive tackle position. And before Dominic Williams, it was all, you know, they have no one there. They, they, they're not going to be able to hold up. And frankly, they needed Dominic Williams. They absolutely needed that addition. But Dejon Terry is no slouch. This kid can really, really play, and he's one of those guys that I think fits really well with what they're trying to do over there at Oklahoma, where those defensive tackles aren't going to be, you know, real big pass rush guys. That's not necessarily their skill set, and that's not what Brent Venables wants from them. He wants them to eat up as much space as they can, be really good against the run, and let their edge rushers like Ethan Downs uh, kind of just eat on the outside, and that's a huge part of this defense, and Dejon Terry can do that. He can eat up space as well as anyone. There's no two ways about that, so the this duo just has to be strong between Dominic Williams and Dejon Terry. If they're not, the entire defense will suffer, whether that's edge rushing being a little bit less uh, good than it could be. And if edge rushing is bad and you can't get to the quarterback, the back end's going to suffer. So this is really where everything kind of starts for them. If Dominic Williams and Dejon Terry can play really good football, they're going to be more than fine on that defense. If they struggle a little bit and can't play, or maybe one of them goes down with an injury, God forbid, you're going to have some problems on that Oklahoma defense, and it could get bad pretty quickly. But I do think Dejon Terry is going to have a fantastic year, and I do think he's someone to watch. Um, But finally, let's get to the guys that are on my list so far. Oh, excuse me. I apologize for that. Uh, We have a ton of guys on this list thus far throughout the season, some guys that I really, really like. I tried to go a little bit more off the beaten path today than I have in the past with some uh, different teams, some different players that you might not have heard of. So I very much like this group. I think this is going to be a really fun group to watch throughout the season and just cannot wait to see all these guys play. But that'll do it for this edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I am off to Orlando to give EA Sports a little piece of my mind about some of these ratings they put together. But thank you so much for listening. Uh, Your support means a ton to us. So please remember to subscribe to the show. Leave a positive review. It does make a huge difference for us. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, 
all of the social pages for all of the content and updates you could possibly need. We just have incredible people doing great work across every single sport you could possibly want. So definitely tune in to GSMC and we have you totally covered. But thank you once again for listening and I will see you guys on Monday.